So this is a brief tutorial on how you can use Movie Maker to edit your video project. So I'm going to go ahead and open Movie Maker on my computer. And this is what it's going to look like when you first open it. So what you're going to want to do first is to click and look for the film file that you have your video in, the main part of your video. So I'm going to use an example from another class to show you how this works. So you would click on the file you want to use and then click open and then you can see that the entire clip is laid out in kind of a timeline fashion over here so you can see how long the video is. And then you can also look over here to view the video as if you were watching the movie, the final product. So. I can, this way I can see, okay, at this point, I might want to add something in here. So like, let's see, I'm going to show you how to split a clip. So let's say I want to split the clip right here, at this point. So here I would go up to Video Tools and go to Edit. And you can split the clip right here. And so you can see now I have two clips. And let's say I'm going to add a video right in the middle of this. So I'm going to get an example of the YouTube video I downloaded. And so I can show you exactly how you would do this. So you could drag this up here and put it right in the middle. And from here, let's say I wanted to trim this a little bit. And so here I will open the trim tool. And so I'm going to set the end point it's down here. So I'm going to move this, move this over a little bit here. I'm going to trim this down. And so I can watch in the viewing pane to see where I want it to stop. Let's say I want it to stop right here. So then I can save the trim. And there's my edited video clip here. So that's just how, just a little bit of how you can edit the video once you have put it into the movie maker. So now I'm going to add some text effects since I've got all my video in place. So let's say I want to add a title to this. Okay. And this is not going to be the most amazing title ever, but it's just going to give you an idea of how the text features work. So you can see I can move this around on the screen to the position I want it to be in. And just like text in Microsoft Word, you can change the font, the font size, the color, whether it's bold, italic, and uh, trans or transparent, or centered to the left, centered to the right, and things like this. The most important thing you want to pay attention to is when the text appears and how long the text appears on the screen. So here you can adjust the text duration. So Generally for a title like this, you want to have the text on the screen for about 10 seconds to give the viewer enough time to read and process what they've seen. For something longer, let's say you have subtitle or caption, okay. So I'm going to add a caption, not right here, let's say I'm going to add a caption right here. So let's say I'm going to have a keyword. And this is probably what you're going to use any sort of uh, caption for anyway at this point. It's just to give us some keywords. Okay, so there I have the definition of syntax and the word syntax in my caption there. So, to give the reader, or the viewer, excuse me, enough time to process what they've read, I'm going to make this about 15 seconds. So, and you're going to want to maybe look at the max time is 30 seconds. And 
The only time you would be having text on the screen for that long is if it's a longer piece of text like this. Syntax definition won't take too long to read, but if you have longer text, you'll want to make sure it's on the screen for enough time for your viewer to read and process what they've seen. Otherwise, it would be more difficult for them to process what they've seen. So now, there's some other things you can do. So with transitions, you can actually choose the type of transition that you want to use if you want to introduce a new clip. You want to have a transition in between. So, and again, you can do this with the text as well. There are different kinds of effects. If you go here, you can see that this is just a fade. This one's a stretch. This one is a spin in and then spin out. So you can, there are many different kinds of effects you can use, but make sure you're consistent with the types of effects you're going to use. So let's say you're going to use swing down for one of your captions. You should probably use it for the rest of your captions and the rest of your titles. So that way it's not too distracting if you have too many of these things happening, like if you have one kind of effect on one page and then go to a different effect on a different page, it, it just is going to distract the viewer. So you want to be consistent. At this point now, I'm going to add my music in because I've got the text that I need. So you can go over here to home and then just click here to add music. And so there are some music online music places that you can go that are offered through Windows Movie Maker, but I would suggest um, adding music from a royalty-free music site such as purpleplanet.com. So again, that's purple-planet.com. And this is a site that, again, it provides royalty-free music, and there are several kinds of categories that they have available for you to choose from. So you can look here and see, you know, there's several things, but this is the licensed music, and then here, this is the free, free music. So you want to look here, um, I'm going to pick up beat as my category. And you can, as you can see, there are several tracks for each of the different categories. And if you, you know, you should listen to each of the tracks before you decide to download one. But you can click here and listen at least to a little bit of it before you download it. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one. And so they see the start, downloads start to happen over here and once you get that file downloaded you can just drag it right onto your desktop or to the folder that you're using to store your video files in and things like that and then what you're going to want to do is add music from PC so we're going to add. You can add music where you are if that's a place that you're going to add music at if you are in a good spot, but I would generally just say add music. It'll add it to the beginning of the clip and you can move it to wherever you want to move it to. So I pick the file I want, click open, and as you can see there's the whole track. And so like what you might want to do is if, okay, it's, we see here that this is not going to play for the entire film. So what I can do here is keep adding the file. And it'll just keep adding the, you know, you can loop it that way so that it keeps repeating. And what you're going to want to do too is when you've, once you've added the music, you can check the volume to make sure that your music isn't too loud, it's not overpowering the speakers, but you also want to hear it. So you can look and see with music volume, 
You can adjust it so that it's louder or softer. And again, you want to make sure that you have that clip selected when you do this, or otherwise it won't work. So again, you can adjust the volume from here. And you can also adjust whether it fades in or out and to what degree, so slow, medium, or fast, either fade in or fade out. And that will help as far as the, the volume is concerned. You can also split the um, audio track. There's a way to do that. But, um, if you like, you can set the start point for the music. And how you do that is you can again adjust the time frame the music track starts. And at the very end, of course, you'll want to have credits. So, what you'll do here is again, you can have, you put your group members' names in here, and you can have the text effect that you want as far as introducing the credits. And again, you'll want to make sure that the text stays on the screen long enough for everyone to read the credits, all of the different names and things like that. So again, you can set the text duration here. And so once you're done, of course you want to save movie. And you can save it just for a computer. And so there you can see that the movie is uh, it's going to take a few minutes to actually do this process, part of the process. Okay, so you should get this message when your video is completely done processing. So now you can actually play the video as it is or open the folder that it's in. But first I want to make sure I don't forget to talk about narration. So if you want to do voiceover narration at any point in your movie, this is one way to do it. So click here to record narration. So again, you want to pick the microphone that's, you know, connected to your computer. And again, you'll want to pick something that is already connected to your computer. And so then when you get ready to record, when you get ready, you can hit record. And here is where I'm going to add the voiceover narration to the movie. And so then it'll save your audio track so that way you don't lose it. I'm going to put that in music. And here again you can see you can uh, adjust the narration volume, you can do the same sort of things that you would do with the background music. And you'll want to make sure that your volume is not overpowering the video volume and other things that are going on. So you'll again want to check this before you publish the movie. We show you how you can use the settings in PowerPoint to save your PowerPoint as a picture and integrate it into Windows Movie Maker. So here's an example of a PowerPoint you might have for your presentation. So the first thing I want to do is go to Save As, and you can pick where you're going to save it. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now the important thing is you'll want to select JPEG as your file type so that you save it as a series of pictures. So when you do this and click Save, it's going to ask which slides do you want to export. You can select which slides you want to include or if you wanted to say make all of the slides a picture, all picture format, you can do that as well. That's what I'm going to do now. It might take a second to do that. And once you're done there, it'll create a folder on your desktop that'll have all the pictures in it. 
as you can see, each one is named slide one, slide two, and that way you can know which slide is which. So now I'm going to go to Movie Maker. And all I need to do if I want to put in all of the slides or just a few, I go to Add Videos and Photos. And then I go to where I have saved my PowerPoint slides as they're now pictures. And then I can select which slides I want to insert. So again, if you want to select multiple slides, you can hit Control and put all of them in there and arrange them how you like. Make sure not to copy them. And then when you've selected the ones you want, you can click open. If there's any at some point that you want to get rid of, you can remove them. And again, as you insert video clips and things like that, you'll be able to move the, pa the PowerPoint slides around, and you'll also be able to add narration or webcam video onto your PowerPoint slides as well.